Thank you for tuning in to part two of chapter five in our video series, There Is No Collapse. Picking up where we left off, but pivoting as we're picking up from where we left off, I want to bring something else to everyone's attention. Understand that the the power elite that run the this world and subsequently runs the markets uh, also is in charge of bending and shaping ideas around the markets as well. Remember at the end of the day it's about profit and so they have to paint a picture of urgency. It's one of those um, those techniques in marketing you, where you have to create a sense of urgency. All right, that's that's selling one on one. A little bit of background for those of you who are just tuning in. Maybe you missed the first four parts. I highly encourage you to go back and um, and listen to the first uh, the other parts, the first four parts, along with. Uh, uh, part five, part one of part five, so you can uh, get an overall overall idea of what's going on. But a little background about myself: um, I worked on Wall Street. Um, I, I designed trading systems for wealthy clients, um, designed specifically for their to cater to their needs, whatever it was they were trying to do, whether they needed to hedge themselves in soybeans or if they needed to do something in crude oil, whatever the case may be. And, you know, Apple stock, you name it. Um, that's what I did. Uh, I've worked, <clears throat> excuse me, I've done a couple of things. I also worked in law enforcement and I also worked uh, in insurance and the healthcare side of things. So I've done quite a few things. I've done a lot in my life. You'd be surprised. That's why I can speak so authoritatively on various subjects because. I lived it. Uh, also, I like to fashion myself as a, a sort of a journalist slash historian, if you will. Of course, amateur because everything I do, you know, is self-taught and stuff. I'm, I'm not saying professional, but I, I've made it my life's work to interview all sorts of people that I've ever come in contact with, um, and uh, I've known a lot of people, worked with. A lot of different people from all walks of life, uh, including celebrities and including uh, powerful business people uh, and uh, high up in government, you name it. And working in law enforcement, you meet a lot of people and learn a lot of things too, uh, some of which I can actually share with you, but I'll leave that for another set of videos. And that's how. Uh, Homeland Security is pretty much swallowing up all the local law enforcement under the umbrella of Homeland Security. But we'll leave that for another set of videos. I want you to look at this picture right here. This picture, for those of you who don't have children, or maybe you are never played video games, this is Mario, okay? And this is little Yoshi. Isn't he cute? He's adorable. And that's one of your little uh, flying, what is it, Zumbas or turtles, whatever. Turtles happen to be my favorite pets, by the way. I love turtles. But as you look, it says betrayal. You traitor swine. Mario basically used Yoshi <laughs> to hop. And then he betrays him by jumping off of him, basically bouncing off of him, and letting Yoshi fall to his death, basically. All right? Mario knew what he was going to do before he did it and he used little Yoshi to get him to the next level where he was trying to get to and the point <laughs> that I'm trying to make with this this picture was is one of my favorite is that I want you gold bugs out there gold and silver bugs to really listen up to what I'm about to say to you because I want to put this out here so that you can hear something that you're probably not hearing. Now, before I move forward, I'm going to tell you I love precious metals. I love gold and silver. I own gold and silver. Okay? So, I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say something crazy. 
all right I actually do own it I like the silver stuff in my opinion it is still a store of value has been for like 5,000 years gold and silver is money and not paper we we know this I just want to put that out there because as I go forward you may want to choke and strangle me when you hear the things I'm gonna say that's why I'm gonna put it out there that I love gold and silver all right I love trading gold and silver I've had clients that that's all they did was exclusively trade metals that's the only thing they wanted to trade and I like gold and silver all right I own some physical gold and silver uh, coins and whatnot I do own physicals I have it in my position in my possession not in a storage locker or in a safe or somewhere offshore it's in my possession because as you know uh, was it, was it, how does it say a possession is uh, nonsense of the law something like that bottom line is if you don't have it in your hand then you don't own it okay so I know all that just want to get just want to clear the air with that going forward I love gold and silver I trade gold and silver for myself and for my clients as well and I also buy and accumulate so I I, I, I do own the, the, the physicals and I have no problem with that I also trade the paper markets because they're easily tradable because they're rigged and manipulated so you can pretty much get an idea of how to um, to trade it because it's it's there we'll get into that too all right so I laid the groundwork now I can move forward and hit you with the hard stuff okay here we go I believe that based on what I have seen what I've heard and what I know is that the majority of the public is being deceived and manipulated into accumulating gold and silver under false pretenses now let me break it down further as you know in this series we've been talking about in our last segment fear porn they're using fear and end of the world apocalyptic scenarios to get you to buy more of their wares you go to their seminars you 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 know you're you're stacking which is nothing wrong with stacking stacking is good and good and bad times it doesn't matter but the point I want you to really hear me out on is what they're doing and how they're manipulating your conscience and your emotions through apocalyptic um, you know forecast Ooh, the dollar is gonna die tomorrow it's gonna die in a month it's gonna die in, in a year oops no I, I meant next year a year after that no the year after that just stringing you along having you to and, and everyone is selling gold and, and silver of some sort now or selling some book or tape or series of lectures you name it it's a big the gold and silver industry is huge and I'm not talking about just the market you know the tradable paper markets like the the GLD and the SLV uh, ETFs I'm talking about you know from futures to the Forex where you can trade spot uh, it used to be able to trade spot here in the states now you can only do it overseas if you're if you're overseas person but it's it's a huge industry in and of itself you have people that I respect okay uh, like like Peter Schiff and Gerald Salente and all these other people um, on YouTube and everywhere you, you know they 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 spout it that's all they do they you know they, they they pump it and they want you to buy it and that's how it is anyone who makes money off of it obviously has a vested interest in you buying it I'm, I'm just saying now again let me preface it by saying that there's nothing wrong with stacking all right but you need to understand how you're being manipulated like for instance I'm gonna go out on a limb and tell you that it has become just as shameless as uh, CNBC was back in the late 90s and early 2000s how they would say to you such and such um, you liked um, you know XYZ stock at a hundred you're gonna love it at 20 instead of telling you to get out when the thing uh, lost 10% of its value they tell you to hold on and keep buying dollar cost averaging is what they like to call it and really it's it, it's foolishness because what's happening is they're selling to you because they're getting out and you're buying on the way down that's what the rich do that's what the elite do all right okay and it should be noted that as far as the the gimmicks that are used to get you 
in to, to feed into the hype I think is, is terrible especially in the trading aspect of things I've noticed that when the, the the markets were falling and obviously in a bear market they told you that you should uh, you should be buying uh, the, the in the paper markets and that was just terrible advice instead of letting you know that it was apparently accelerating in a, in a, in a long protracted down market and that's the same thing that CNBC and them did back after the NASDAQ bubble bursted in 2000 they were in denial I remember when Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac was uh, collapsing um, I, I remember warning people back when Fannie Mae was like at uh, $90 a share and I was telling people they needed you know to, to come to terms that it's it's bearish it's in a bear market and they need to um, take profit and or position themselves on the short side and I was laughed at because the housing market was on fire and everybody was making money hand over fist and instead of you know taking solid sound advice they took the talking head advice on television telling them to stay the course and spouting all these investing principles and those investing principles uh, betrayed them and a lot of people lost all their money in the dot-com bubble uh, and a lot of people lost a lot of money and had to file bankruptcy doing the housing market debacle as well so unfortunately betrayal is something that uh, Wall Street does very well they'll suck you into a quote-unquote investment and then after they've pumped it up and sucked all the money out of it they can they pull the rug out from underneath of you and then you're left holding the bag so how can you then you know expect to be told anything good coming out of there so now all of a sudden we you know we make up for all the bad years of bad advice now and you think they're gonna tell you something right you think the powers that be are gonna come and tell you when exactly they plan on pulling the plug from the markets of course not of course not it always comes in shock and awe it comes when you least expect it but it always comes always uh, in a situ in a time where the markets are already going that way naturally it's already along the natural course of things I've already showed you in the prior video that 9-11 uh, happened as an uh, as far as the, the price action um, we basically had 18 months worth of price action happen in a week but it was already the natural course of things all right had you been a, a trader back then you would have seen that the market was in a downtrend and you would have positioned yourself on the short side all right and you would have made a lot of money but if you would have listened to the talking heads on television you would have constantly been buying on the way down and you would have been one of those people who lost all your money and your life savings like those people that unfortunately someone bought uh, Yahoo when it was three hundred dollars a share some someone did all right it traded up to that three hundred that three hundred mark someone lost money when it was at two hundred a lot of people lost money when it got to two hundred if you didn't get out of the market when it went from twenty three dollars a share uh, to three hundred if you didn't take profit up there and then in the nosebleed section in the Yahoo stock then you got your face completely and utterly ripped off and that's the point that I wanted to make here so with that said what is going to be the role of precious metals in this new uh, paradigm that we find ourselves we're in a new market now we're, we're in a new econ a new economy a new economic phase okay everything is electronic now all right so with the new electronic one world currency money market that we are in and we have been in for some time they're just rolling it out now in mass what is going to be the role of gold and silver well I'm here to tell you that the end game for gold and silver is that it's going to be deemed worthless I didn't say that it will become worthless I said it's going to be deemed as worthless because that is the end game for it if things get too bad off they're just going to restrict the buying and selling of it all together and make it an act of national security and make it illegal to even hold they've done it before 
for those of you who are who are uh, unaware of this fact well understand that it did happen it happened before and it's going to happen again gold will be rendered worthless in the new system all right if all the the predictions are correct and America implodes like Ru like Russia did there will be nothing on the shelves to buy especially food at any price try spending gold at your local store and risk being attacked and robbed and if martial law is enforced you won't be able to go anywhere anyway so you will have to make do with what little you have if anything left alright so think about growing a garden you say well then be prepared to stand guard over day and night unless you have your own military or you have enough people uh, on your compound where you guys can sleep in shifts furthermore the control mechanisms will be set in place and for a limited time you may be able to gain access to digital credits in exchange for your gold alright the powers that be can set up all kinds of control mechanisms through the new control grid this electronic system in other words they can make one do as if um, they want they can say alright this is what you need to do if you want access to your gold investments um, you know, gold has value because people have chosen to make it valuable for centuries. Same with precious gems, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, etc. They're valuable because people want them. So the final stage of evolution in this mon this new monetary system um, is going to be a universal embrace of electronic money, which we're seeing already taking place and has been for some time now technically speaking since 1994 on a more global scale indeed this final stage has already been commenced as I just stated and all the international monetary bandits now need uh, to create some kind of world crisis such as a nuclear attack you know trying to you know hit the, the hornet's nest of Iran trying to go them in the war and whatever they can do to bring up to bring about a would-be total collapse of the US dollar alright and then that will make a, a a mass stampede away from paper currencies now if that if that doesn't work then they may use a psychological shock of the collapse of the dollar alright uh, there's so many different things they could do alright but here's what happens though if something like that were to happen to the US then electronic money will effortlessly replace paper money as the new cashless money system of the world eventually countries around the world will be trapped with debts they could never repay and would thus be at the mercy of the central bank in their area alright they have a grand design uh, to financially enslave the masses alright and that would permit them to impose their dictatorship over the whole world uh, that's what they want the central bank system is that is that control grid that's the, the that's the system that's in place uh, remember in 1933 the US government enacted legislation at the time prohibiting American residents from keeping gold coins bullion or gold certificates in their possession all right gold coins uh, were uh, demonetized and were no longer uh, permitted as legal t legal tenor and uh, they could not be used as money if anyone was caught with such gold after a certain date it could be fined ten thousand dollars or and or be imprisoned for six months now in exchange for the gold coins and bullion the Federal Reserve Bank which we know is a private bank they offered paper currency by way of US dollars with an assigned numerical value of twenty dollars for every one ounce of gold most Americans rushed to exchange their gold for paper currency at that time. But those who were aware they were being ripped off, all right, they didn't. All right, some of them even shipped their gold away to, to Swiss banks. Now, it is significant that the British government also demonetized gold coins in the same year as the U.S. did. All right, and you need to you need to make a note of that a lot of people they don't talk about that but they did so through the simple expedient suspending of redeemability of the sterling paper pound into gold it's just that easy for them to do wave of a hand 
Now, I want to bring it to today. All right. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange has recently done the same thing with futures contracts that are that are non-redeemable to physical. In other words, you can no longer have the option of taking delivery on your futures contracts. They are instead settled in cash. And that is a fact. And it's been that way for several years now. All right. So you can't even do a workaround and go around the system anymore. They've, they've shut the door. You've been blocked off. Uh, after all the gold in the USA has been exchanged for paper currency, the U.S. government uh, then proceeded back in January of 1934 to arbitrarily devalue the U.S. paper dollar by 41% and then rescinded the law of prohibition concerning gold that was previously enacted. And the American people rushed back to exchange their paper currency for gold at the new exchange value of $35 per ounce of gold. In the process, they were robbed of 41% of their wealth. Thus, legalized theft that takes place when currency is devalued. That's what always happens. So, in other words, the Great Depression was artificially contrived in order to justify the imposition of an international monetary system that would bring order to a chaotic world of money. 2.0 is on the way. It's not an economic collapse per se. Rather, it's a power grab and forced financial inoculation of the current monetary system. You need to, you need to be made aware of that too. Uh, in April 2002, U.S. Uh, Congressman then Ron Paul sent the following letter to both the U.S. Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve Bank, which incidentally is a privately owned bank. We've talked about that, asking why the International Monetary Fund prohibits gold-backed currencies for its member states. And I and I and I quote: "I am writing regarding Article Four, Section Two B of the International Monetary Fund's Article of Agreement." As you may be aware, this language prohibits countries who are members of the IMF from linking their currency to gold. Thus, the IMF is forbidding countries suffering from an erratic monetary policy from adopting the most effective means of stabilizing their currency. This policy could delay a country's recovery from an economic crisis and retard economic growth, thus furthering economic and political instability. I would greatly appreciate an explanation from both the Treasury and the Federal Reserve of the reasons the United States has continued to acquaintance in this misguided policy. Please contact Mr. Normal Singleton, my legislative director, if you require any further information regarding this request. Thank you for your cooperation in this matter. Ron Paul, U.S. House of Representatives, end quote. So, as a result, Individuals and in segments and agencies of the government are implementing laws that were established in the books way back in the day, long time ago, while some other laws were placed into the, the backs of these existing laws. So that's that, that you know, the, the pork policy, where they stuff other things into bills and legislations. Now, you need to know this. Once the World Bank and the IMF and the central banks establish uh, the world currency, i.e. digital electronic system of credit and debit, they will set the price of gold and or who can access this investment. You will be forced to get updated into the new electronic system or risk losing your precious metals and other assets. You need to understand that going forward. Their control mechanism, mechanisms, you know, laws, rules and regulations are already in place right now as I'm recording this video. Establishing central banks into countries uh, seems to act as a, ve a vehicle for control over the said countries. And once established, that country gets entangled into the network because it's all electronic anyway. All right. And after the, the networks of the central banks gets to a point, uh, you know, and everything's running, you know, the worldwide bailout schemes that have been happening, things like that, then... I see, you know, soon it's going to start evolving. And this change will be in place uh, to establish more control and them setting up a Supreme World Bank uh, and a form of global taxation. And then the, the microchip uh, will be heavily enforced around the same time. And you're already starting to see the push in the commercials for the whole uh, chipping of individuals, okay? 
that's already being rolled out right now. The global tax is going to be the carbon tax and the carbon credits and all and whatever acronym or way they can phrase it or put it is going to be at the end of the day. It's a global tax. Global taxation now is what they're pushing for. All right. They want to expand and extend uh, the control and the role of the central bank. All right. That's where we're going with this. OK. Uh, already um, they're talking about uh, carrying out a uh, fictitious cyber attack. And using that as a false flag operation so that the international government bodies will have justification uh, to roll this uh, electronic system out, which they will deem to be safer and hat proof. Uh, in addition to that, think about it. How did gold save the millions of people in World War II? How did gold do that? If the government is going to control food, do you think that if somebody had several bars of gold that you could you know trade that someone would swap a bucket of rice with you for that no the world governments want to control the masses of people <clears throat> and those that do not obey will be taken away to FEMA camps or simply just ignored and allowed to starve to death on the street that's that, that that's the end game once the 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 money collapses, you know they shut down the old system, and that's how they, they they grab power and gain control, and they won't let anyone deal in any of the old currencies. Everything's going to have to be electronic, and you're going to have to be chipped, and that will make you a virtual slave going forward. So, <clears throat> gold is valuable now. So why is it valuable now? You're going to want to use it so that you can you know protect yourself as much as possible to delay your you and your family having to be chipped and or put into this new control grid mechanism right now I'm telling you the system is betraying you because it's not giving you the whole story and the whole truth it's not an economic collapse that's coming it's a power grab they're, they're literally turning off the old system and turning switching to the new system it's sort of like a like when your computer has to install updates uh, it shuts itself down to install and then reboots itself uh, with those new updates installed so that's what's gonna happen here just like on 9-11 what did we do we shut down and then what, what happened we reopened a week later rebooted itself anew and that's where you got your new system and your new market and that's why most people cannot prosper in the new market in the new economy of things this new digital age because they don't understand that everything's being controlled by algorithms we have money um, money's being exchanged and, and, and light speed hundreds of a second even and the old school market makers on the exchange floors have been replaced with electronic mechanisms, the electronic market makers. That's why you see the the markets basically self-sustain and self-correct themselves. You don't even need a PPT anymore. You just need to set rules in place and algorithms in place that the markets will self-correct themselves when moved in a certain direction or in a certain way. And the options for said algorithms are limitless. Uh, that's why the markets are, act almost as an artificial intelligence even to a point. You can have you know millions of conditions wrapped into your code that will make the markets act thus and so you only need a handful of people to set and monitor and maybe uh, one person could be responsible for maintaining this side of things or that side of this gets out of balance turn this on you know it's at the stage you don't even need people to do that you know you just need maybe you know a team of uh, computer programmers and coders to you know monitor things and uh, you know things like that that's about it you don't really need anyone to do anything except for maintain said system that's it so it's like an IT department and the exchanges definitely have what an IT department yes they do because they need it they don't need floor traders and brokers anymore they just need computer people everything now is computer computerized roboticized and that's where we are. Uh, stay tuned for our next installment. 
where we're going to talk about and demonstrate how all roads lead to Rome. Very interesting and in helping you understand going forward how you're going to be able to navigate the markets and how this will affect every aspect of investing and how traditional rules of investing have died. They died a horrible death, buy and hold is dead, value investing is dead, all of that. Everything you've ever been taught about in investing, everything you've been taught about economics, even in business school, is dead. And I will demonstrate that in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Be encouraged. Until next time.